it's a complete privilege to get to the end of 2020 um, after this year that I, I know we've all defined as a year none of us were expecting and, and life under COVID obviously continues. But we thought as a, as a Joburg team, it was quite nice to maybe tell you some of the stories of our year because everyone has had a journey and there's been some certainly some interesting moments and also some new and innovative times. And, I, and, I, and perhaps I'll maybe starting with you thinking back to that sale when you know we got the news from the president that we were going into lockdown. Yeah. You know how were we going to live up to the expectations of bringing our clients' work to the market? Yeah. Um, and I don't think any of us thought of you taking auction in your running shoes. Yeah, I mean, was it oh, frankly a terrifying moment? We had no idea how on earth we were going to continue with our sales, particularly our big marquee flagship uh, live auctions. Um, and yet here now in, in December we've managed to get 13 sales done and you know different platforms virtual online you know across the country Johannesburg and Cape Town it's been amazing we've had a, been on a very steep mm -hmm. uh, learning curve but yes that first virtual live sale we did I'll never forget um, what it was in the May um, yeah, May the 11th May the 11th and we were in I think level four lockdown uh, and we were here sort of late at night, we all had our permits, you know, only a handful of us uh, here in the Johannesburg office and uh, the best place to film at the time was right in the back, uh, sort of among some of the stacks and all the storage units. And Arisha's desk, I mean Arisha was always pedantic about her desk, that sort of got flattened to the side of the wall and, uh, and sort of we kept saying poor Arisha if she could see where her desk was going as you moved in the rostrum. Yeah and it was completely bizarre because we had all these screens and cords and wires sort of going across the room and I remember being in a rostrum selling and seeing Janine just crawling in front of me because <laughs> one of the one of the plugs had, had been moved and, and she had to had to get across the room um, yeah it was completely bizarre but a, an amazing experience and yes we missed the hundreds of people in the room but it had its own sense of excitement uh, it was it was yeah I mean it was palpable the wine sale on the Sunday when we actually logged on and thought, would there, any, would there be anybody there? And there certainly was. And then to be a complete white glove auction in lockdown level four, where alcohol yeah. was prohibitive and we had to make sure that we went and followed the right legal parameters. Yeah. But I mean, when those bits started coming in, I mean, the excitement from yeah, around was, the world, it wasn't it was just, amazing. you know, the local market. Which yeah. was, and that's been, I mean, arguably the most exciting aspect of all these changes is that uh, the number of international bidders on our on our site has just gone through the roof um, and it's fantastic to see people bidding from Hong Kong and Sydney and Los Angeles and, uh, and London and Berlin um, we haven't really uh, had that kind of international energy um, previously so that, that's been wonderful. But one aspect that I think is relevant for you obviously as the head of the department here in Johannesburg is, is, the, is the additional contextualization and historical context and actually Valilam that's something that I think is interesting from your perspective because you obviously well both of you or all three of you are you know that aspect of our business is imperative but you managed to also put on you know a first virtual uh, academic exhibition which yes. was also exciting. Yeah, yeah, no, Tell indeed, us a bit about yeah. that. Uh, indeed uh, you know uh, Stars and Company has been doing this for quite a number of years now uh, mounting a museum quality exhibition concomitant with a very strong uh, educational component uh, uh, with it and this year we we saw it as a challenge to mount and yet another very good one. Uh, we uh, did a pairing Gladys Mugutlandlu and Maggie Laubscher and it was a virtual exhibition uh, uh, during the uh, uh, RMB uh, Turbine Art Fair. And normally I would go to students uh, such as the Artist Proof Studio students and get them involved to make work that we could show and uh, sell during the fair. But this year it was different. So what I thought was to conduct an in-service teacher training program, which worked quite well. You know, Alistair mentioned adapting to the new technology. I had to uh, uh, brush up my skills on, uh, develop my skills on Zoom quite quickly. <laughs> and uh, it worked quite well. We invited uh, art, uh, art teachers 
and uh, we looked at uh, the relationship between Maggie and Gladys, and in the end it worked quite well. Uh, but we, 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 we insisted on printing a, a real catalogue, uh, which is always good uh, for, for, for future references. I mean, who would have ever thought, for that? I mean, in your sort of curatorial career, that's what, 30 years or something, all the amazing shows, the mega retrospectives you've put on, um, yeah, that you would do a show like this entirely virtually, yeah. you know, with everything hanging virtually and people sort of moving around a, an online space looking at these works. Yeah, it was uh, quite different, but, but brilliantly successful. Uh, and I think maybe the other thing that I uh, appreciate from that exhibition was, you know, the art community around us, particularly the NGOs and the educational institutions, have really had a terrible time. And also to be able to get those two fabulous writers from from Durban, part of the KZNSA um, group, um, and they had a you know had a fabulous opportunity to write their perspectives on this exhibition. But that then translated into the exhibition that the KZNSA put on at the R&B Durban Art Fair. So it was nice to be able to also support initiatives like that, which could have got lost in, in a year of COVID. No, certainly. Yeah, no, so, so it's not only the teachers, but uh, different dimensions such as art writing, art criticism, I think featured as well. Uh, of course, we, we communicated with KZ, uh, KZSNA Gallery. They invited a group of uh, people to, and their brief was to mount an exhibition of what is it like under COVID. And they interpreted the uh, the, 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 the pairing that Gladys Mkutlan do and Maggie Lamsha pairing in a completely different way, but they use that as a starting point to unlock their own exhibitions uh, and the manner in which they work related to these two phenomenal women artists. Yeah, I mean, I mean the one sort of silver lining of this, of the, this year has been a, a real sense of art community, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. Um, yes, we all have our, our, our niches w w within the, the ecosystem, but we definitely worked much closer with uh, so many NGOs and charities and galleries, um, and that's been fantastic. I mean, Arisha has done so much work on Zoom with our museum moments. Yeah. Uh, that was an absolute highlight for me. Yeah, that was fun, because then we did the, the daily Zoom talks that started in level five lockdown, and we got to collaborate with museums and collections and even like within the office we had we got to actually talk to all the specialists and all our colleagues and just share what our favorite artists are talk about the artworks coming up in the in the auction you know that wonderful moment where annie our colleague in cape town started telling us about you know her personal relationships with andrew Fister and peter clark in terms of knowing them and, and, and living in simonstown around each other i love that yeah. was and Klitschikov, really. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she danced with Klitschikov. <laughs> one works with someone and doesn't know these secrets. Yeah, absolutely. And one of my favorites was with uh, Greg Malaka when he came and he gave his interpretation on the Gerard Sokoto. And it was completely different. We didn't even see it that way. Yeah, so but that awesome. was just such a, so great to actually have these different opinions and different views on all the artworks. Yeah. But the difficulty actually on that talk was that Hugo from our wine department was sipping away on a scrummy looking bottle of wine, I can't remember the label, and we were all in lockdown level four with no alcohol left. Yeah, so gorgeous. we sort of rather hang or hung on that because sipping of the wine. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of, um, in terms of art, artists and what we have found too within this year is that comment you made Alistair about the transcending geographical borders. I think that has been something that's been liberating. I think that we are not defined by Joburg, Cape Town or South Africa. We, we're defined about the content of what we're offering. Um, and I think that's exciting. I think, and I think people have appreciated the variety and the scale of what we do offer. But two, that we can also learn and explore new ideas and new artists. So, you know, the content has been... Is, is yeah, I, mean, I, I love the fact that our, our, our offerings have changed very slightly. Yes, we still have a focus on South African and sort of Pan-African art, but, but yes, we, we have a much broader offering in, in our sales now to reflect, you know, a great international audience. And a new, a new, you know, you place a new theme in the sale, well, a couple of new things. I mean, maybe that's also something that is exciting. Yeah, I mean, we had a, I mean, we loved doing it, a focus on, on South African ceramics. I mean, Valhalla really drove it, mm -hmm. uh, but we, we, we took in, you know, spectacular works by uh, artists who, in some cases, I've never even heard of. Uh, and I love that aspect of our job too, you know, knowing that uh, we learn every single day, we handle artists that some of us 
might know very little about, um, but they're you know, being fantastic quality. And you know, the market's also responded to that. You know, e even though they might not recognize uh, some of these names, you know, they are reacting to the quality of the work. You know, and so many of those previously unknown artists have performed brilliantly at auction. Um, you know, and that's very exciting for the future. But yeah, and no, also that's the artists sale. that we have, the fact that you have, you know, Kentridge or Deborah Bell that does work on paper, does, you know, sculpture, yeah. does uh, ceramics, does, yeah. I mean, it's just endless. It's, yeah, it's and fabulous. I, I think, you know, you mentioned contextualizing the whole thing. And uh, when you look at contemporary South African ceramics, it's very different to our normal offering, you know, our VOC plates yeah. and 19th century glass and that type of thing. I think our, our, our clients are used to those. But here's a new, uh, period, you know, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and uh, interesting the crossover, as Susie mentioned, between uh, painting, work on paper, mm -hmm. and then ceramics. All of a sudden, Deborah Bell and, uh, and the likes them to contextualize that. Where does the idea of contemporary South African ceramics actually come from? Mm -hmm. uh, long history dating mm -hmm. back a good hundred years and how that evolved. That was quite exciting to do. Yeah. Have to say. Also, I mean, I think we love the fact that we could offer new exciting things at more affordable uh, figures too, you know, more, more accessible price points. You know, it's not all about selling 10, 15, 20 million rand pictures. We, we love the idea of offering, you know, a fantastic 3,000 rand ceramic. Um, and that also allowed us to, to, to do that this year. Yeah, and, and, and you know, Sophie Louise and Vanessa Phillips in our Cape Town office put together the interiors session in our last sale, yeah. where they actually, you know, combined art and, and, and furniture and, and decorative arts all in one session, but visualizing it in a context. And I yeah. think that was also, it, yeah. was, it was fabulous Brilliant. to see, I mean, I know in a view we often get that, but not in a catalog or yeah. not to a client who can't come and see it. So to do it in, in the virtual realm, was was it a good addition and and has has so much more opportunity to to look at yeah. for, for future sales but yeah, i mean no, the stories the stories around this auction i mean we've always got you know there's some fantastic things but i mean Bilele, what's your highlight of what you found mm -hmm. this year oh uh, uh, yeah the, i think for me it was uh, the gin of masons we repatriated a wonderful collection the collectors uh, were good friends with Judith and they collected from a best period, the 70s and 80s. And uh, Alistair mentioned earlier on about uh, my, my, my curatorial work. In 2008, I did a big uh, Judith Mason retrospective for Standard Bank Gallery and it was wonderful to see such a wonderful collection. And of course, with COVID, uh, it was quite difficult, some nail-biting experiences of the works being stuck at the border, at customs and what have you but mercifully they all arrived on time and we could include that on our north-south. Um, yeah, uh, and then of course to contextualize those words, to write about them, to talk about them, I think was quite uh, was quite yeah. uh, gratifying for me. So. I mean, there's certainly been more challenges than, than normal. And I think we've all been missing our travels. You know, we, we haven't been able to do any sweeps. You know, typically you know, in a normal year we'll go to Peter Maritzburg, Durban, Howick, Hilton, Bloemfontein, Kimberley. Um, and the uh, Cape Town office would do their side of yeah, the events. Uh, absolutely, and we haven't. We really missed that because you know those sweeps. Uh, more often than not, are where we find really special, unusual items. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that, that's been a bit of a shame. But and also you hear the back. stories about yeah. the artwork, you know, where people bought it, how they bought it, did they know the artists, yeah. you know, you don't, you can't, that well, you get over email, but it's much, yeah. it's much more fun to, to, to speak yeah, to. Yeah, and hopefully we'll be back on the road yeah. sort of next year, because that's certainly a fun, fun part of our job. But I, I, I'm, I think the other bit that's just been extraordinary mm -hmm. is the, the, the fact that we were fortunate, I know, to have the online platform. But I think clients also appreciate the fact that there's such a variety of things you can buy on an online sale, from wine to silver to pieces of jewellery to, to pieces of furniture to prints to um, um, paintings. You know, that, that in itself has been a liberation because people have also needed to sell for a rainy day, particularly in this period. And, and, and I think we are grateful and, and, and thank people who've supported us so that we can help people who've needed to liquidate those assets. I think that has been a reality that's, you know, and I think there have been some very clever buys that some people have made and have benefited from, from, from those well-researched purchases in terms of, of liquidating a fund. But yeah, we're grateful for that. Um, for yeah, that. Our, our clients have been incredible you know, at such a difficult time. Um, 
despite everything, our results have been fantastic. There's still been so much interest in, in all our sales across all platforms. And yes, we've been lucky to bring really fantastic, high quality mm -hmm. books to the market. But um, yeah, it's good to know that, that collectors are still buying, um, you know, investors are still putting their money in, into certain artists. And, yeah, and people can buy art over the internet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when those big bids rolled in on that first live sale, I think anyone could have heard me. I yelped yeah. with excitement. Yeah, he said it was like watching a sports match, watching all the bids yeah. come in. It's like a goal that just got, you Without know, scored. a crowd that was yeah. making noise that you didn't yeah. have to pretend. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the other thing that is nice to see for the for next year is that there have been some um, good sort of young artists that have, have got bursaries that we will see their exhibitions next year. And I think the Emerging Painters Initiative that's been run, you know, with a, with a collection of galleries or, and, and Valerie from First Floor Gallery in Harare particularly, you know, that prize winner, we look forward to seeing that exhibition. And the same as um, uh, the, the winner of the Casero Veltz Award, you know, we look forward to that exhibition. They are all going to be in their COVID lockdown Christmas is working hard. But it's nice to see that there's some young, bright shoots for the for the 2021 season, which I think will be will be nice to see. Now, in talking about 2021, we've already got a very full calendar planned. Um, and yes, we'll need to see how things develop um, in terms of restrictions. But yeah, a good number of more focused, maybe smaller online auctions, uh, some broader general online auctions, of course our flagship virtual uh, live sales you know, in Cape Town and here in Johannesburg. Of course we're all really hoping that we'd be able to welcome more people to our views. You know, we're, we're used to having hundreds if not thousands of people come through to our views and you know, we always say that it's the best cross-section of South African art you'd see anywhere in the country, potentially the world, you know, over that week or over that fortnight. Um, so I really hope we'll be able to welcome more people into our viewings uh, next year. If not physically, then virtually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah first sale is, um, is an online in February and the first live is in, is in March in Cape Town. So, yeah, excitement. But anyway, thank you very much from us at Strauss um, and company. Um, we've had an amazing year and learned so much, but obviously we're also very grateful. Yeah, yeah. certainly.